Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. A while back, I welded a handful of parts for aircraft maintenance. These were just socket extensions, sort of a custom-made socket extension. It's not uncommon at all for aircraft mechanics to have specialty custom-made wrenches, and a lot of times these things will be sent out to job shops on a PO with a drawing and everything, and they may not make any sense to the person building them. They make a whole lot of sense to the person using them some weird reason that they need a certain diameter or a certain thing. Anyway, I welded about a half a dozen of these socket extensions. It lets us talk about how to hold round parts on the bench when you're not using a positioner, how to make good restarts, all that. Let's do it. Okay, here's the job. There are five parts. I've got to weld a male end and a female end. And I don't have the right positioner in my shop today, the day I was doing this. Uh, to, that goes fast enough for, for this small a diameter, so I'm just going to have to do it by hand. And so I'm going to talk about that a little bit. A little drill, drill press vise like this is one of the handiest things you can have in your small welding shop just for holding small parts or odd-shaped parts. Round parts also you can hold uh, on, on V-blocks like this. You can get these on Amazon or eBay. You know, it's typically a machinist type thing, but uh, get the cheap ones for welding. And these little strong hand magnetic uh, v pads are super handy for stuff like this. They're handy for all kinds of things. You just have to be careful, you know, don't weld too close to a magnet. It pulls your arc around and it can also kill the magnet. All right, here are the settings. I'm going to be using 045 ER70S2 wire on this. Normally, for welding anything that's, that's sort of like a socket or an extension, uh, modifying a wrench, I would weld it with uh, ER309 or maybe even Hastelloy W. Today, I'm using the ER70 mainly for only one reason, and that's because uh, this part will be black oxide finished when it's done, and if you use a stainless steel filler on uh, something like this, it'll have too much chromium in it, and it won't blacken. And uh, luckily, I remember to ask the machinist, you know, was this going to get black oxide finished? And he said, yes, it was, and that if I hadn't asked, I, I might have messed up and welded it with the R309. 309 is more foolproof, you know, this, this is a hardenable metal here on these, on these socket ends, and so, you know, ER70 will harden a little bit by picking up some carbon from those, but for what it is, I've done a lot of these, and I know it's going to be just fine, especially with all that surface area of weld, it's so much bigger around than a normal socket extension would be. And there's a reason for that, I don't know what it is, you know, I, this is going to be turned down. Uh, it's about 100 thousandths or 120 thousandths oversized right now, so a good 60 thousandths is going to be turned down on a lathe once this is finished. And like I said earlier, I don't understand the application for this part. I don't know why the large diameter. O only thing I can guess is that it helps it align down through a couple of holes down deep inside some aircraft part. But this is what the drawing called for. This is what we're building. Lots and lots of restarts. Again, I can, I can only go about a quarter of a turn. I'm using this, this ceramic 12 cup. It's doing a really good job shielding. And the main reason I used it here today is just so I could stick the electrode out pretty far. And it makes it easier to film. All right, here's a little clip of the previous video I did focusing on restarts. And I used a lap joint for this particular example. So I'm, I'm, I've got a nice tight arc going. I'm, I'm punching that puddle all the way down into the root of the joint. But I've got to stop for some reason run out of filler wire, have to sneeze, whatever. I taper off pretty quickly because this is mild steel. I'm not worried about leaving any crater cracks or anything like that. Let the post flow run for a good 7 to 10 seconds so that I have a nice oxide-free crater to restart on. And then I'm going to treat that somewhat like it's a target. Make sure I have a, a nice sharp electrode. And then I'm going to sort of light up and pretty quickly get the arc pointing right dead center of that little crater, that target that I showed you earlier. And within three seconds or less, I want to get it to the same size, and then I'm going to move forward and dip and lather, rinse, repeat. Here it is in slow motion. This is taking several seconds, but you see the puddle is just growing, 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 and then when it matches the previous size, that's time to move ahead and carry on and just start doing just like you had left off. And that's the way I do restarts. There's many other techniques that are slightly different, but all of them are similar. And sometimes, you know, if you're doing something that is uh, absolutely must be, you know, watertight or airtight or whatever, it doesn't hurt to back up a ripple or two after you, after you get that 
puddle to the right size just to make sure to reconsume everything. You might have a little, just one little cold area or a little crater crack or something and just make sure to reconsume everything if leaking is the main issue. Here I just don't want to put a tremendous amount of heat into this thing so I just, I'm taking, I, I'm getting that puddle up to size in like a second or two and then I'm just moving on. So these parts were welded up a few weeks ago and I didn't want to post the video without having a, a finished picture of the finished part after final machining, after black oxide finish, and, and you know, the finished part. So here's, here's a picture of that black oxide finished after an, up to about uh, 60 thousandths or so was skim cut off that thing. And here's a close up of the, the socket, the long socket that goes on there. It's pinned on there to prevent it from being you know, coming off inside an aircraft part or something like that. And you can see that ER70S2 weld blackened up pretty evenly with the rest of the part. And again, I don't know why that thing is such a big diameter, but, you know, they got a reason for it, I'm sure. Otherwise, they wouldn't pay the money to have these specialty extensions made. Either way, this was a gravy job. It would have been even, even more fun if I had the positioner available to knock these things out. But... Hey, one more thing. I support these videos with sales from my online store at weldmonger.com. So if you want to learn more about the ceramic 12 cup that I use in this video or any of the other cups like the Pyrex cups or TIG fingers or things like that, visit weldmonger.com. See you next time.